Hi all, Larry Feldman with a lesson on inverse functions. Um, if you're like me, pictures can help you understand concepts a lot easier. Um, if not, I don't think it can hurt. So let me just draw a quick diagram. And I want to illustrate what's happening with an inverse function. Let's say we have an input x it passes through this box which performs some sort of operation on the x. It changes it in some way, potentially. And it gives us an output that's y. We want to pass y into another box that performs some sort of operation on y in such a way that we get back what we started with, which is x x goes in here, x comes out here. What we need to find then is what's called the inverse function, which is f to the negative 1 of x, which is somewhat of an unfortunate um, use of, of notation because a lot of students think that f of negative 1 or f to the negative 1 of x is equal to 1 over f of x because we've been taught that that x to the negative n is 1 over x to the n. But guess what? In this case, f to the negative 1 does not equal 1 over f of x. So um, try not to let that uh, get in the way of, of your understanding of this topic. It's just a notation that's used to indicate the inverse function. So with that knowledge, let me go a little bit deeper. Uh, I'm going to clear the screen. And let's say uh, we have a function f of x, which is 2x plus 5, for example. And I want to find the inverse function, meaning if we take an input x and we multiply it by 2 and add 5, we're going to get some sort of output. Well, if I take that output, I want to pass it through the inverse function to get back the x that we started with. Now, there's a very simple procedure for finding the inverse function. What we do is we replace f of x with y and rewrite the function like this, and then we swap x and y. Wherever there's a y, we put an x. Wherever there's an x, we put a y. And then we solve for y. What does that mean, solve for y? That means get y by itself. So we subtract 5 from both sides. And now we have to divide both sides by 2. And you see that y equals x minus 5 over 2. And just reversing the order here and using the proper notation, f inverse of x is x minus 5 over over 2. So let's take a look at this. We, we have an input, we pass it through f of x, we get an output which we pass through the inverse function of f of x, and ideally we will get out of this entire system what we started with, which is x. So let's, let's try that out. Let's say, for example, that x equals negative 1. Okay, so we put in a negative 1 here. Using our function, f of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 plus 5, which is negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. So that means this is a 3. Now, we need to pass 3 through the inverse function and if we did this correctly, or if I did it correctly, um, we should get negative 1 out of this second box. So let's, let's check that out. f inverse of 3, so this is 3, that's what's going into the inverse function. f inverse of 3, we're going to use this equation here we take 3 minus 5 because x is 3 we sub it in here 
3 minus 5 over 2 is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And sure enough, we get a negative 1 as the output. So, so that worked well. So I've had a lot of students ask me when they're going to use this in math. Of course, they ask me when they're going to use it in life, but that's a, a longer story. But um, when, are they, when do they use inverse functions in math? And, and there are plenty of uh, cases where inverse functions come into play. But uh, one of the most prominent areas is in trigonometry, where, for example, I can take sine of an angle and I can get some sort of value here. Let's say it's C. Well, what if I want to find this angle theta and I know C? Well, it turns out that theta is the inverse sine of C. So it's the inverse function of sine. This, again, does not mean 1 over sine. It means the inverse function of sine. That's very important. So that's just one example um, in the math world where inverse functions come into play. Now, one property, one very important property of inverse functions is that f of f inverse of x is going to equal f inverse of f of x, which is going to equal x. Now, this in equation form is exactly what I was is exactly what I showed in the diagram at the beginning of the lecture. And I'll just quickly scribble it up here, where we have x here, x here. Now this could be f of x, and this is f inverse of x. Or I could flip-flop these uh, functions, and I would still get an output of x with an input of x. So this equation uh, represents what's going on in this diagram. So let, let's take a look at that. Let's look at an, let's look at an example. So let's say f of x is um, 2x. Let's, let's make it simple. f of x equals 2x. Let's find the inverse function. So we let f of x equal y and we rewrite the function, then we flip-flop the x and y, and then we solve for y, so we have to divide by 2, and we get y equals x over 2. I just moved the y term to the left. And using the proper notation, f inverse of x equals x over 2. So, let's take a look at this. f of f, excuse me, f of f inverse of x equals f of, by substitution, f inverse of x is x over 2. Now, what is f of x over 2? We go to that function, and wherever there's an x, namely here and here, we replace it with x over 2. So I take this 2 coefficient, I replace the x with x over 2, those cancel, and sure enough, we get x. Let's take f inverse on the outside, like this, working inside out using substitution. I get f inverse of what is f of x. By substitution, f of x is 2x, so I sub in 2x here. Now, I go to the inverse function. f inverse of x equals x over 2. Wherever there's an x, I replace it with 2x. So I get 2x over 2. 2's cancel, and I'm left with x. So that's a very important property of inverse functions, that when you take the composition of a function and its inverse, you get x in either order. Okay, now there's a very important property of functions and their inverses, and that is that they are reflections of one another across the line 
y equals x. So let's look at f of x equals 2x and f inverse of x equals x over 2, which is the problem that we just finished. And if we graph these functions on the same xy plane, and I also graph the line y equals x, this is the line y equals x. I want you to notice that um, the graph of f of x, which is um, f of x equals 2x. Now that's a line with a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 2. So f of x looks roughly like this. Let's change colors here f inverse of x is a line with a slope of 1 half. So it still has a y-intercept of 0, but it goes up 1 over 2. And f inverse of x looks something like this. So notice that this line y equals x acts kind of like a mirror, and it reflects f of x across the mirror to become f inverse of x and vice versa. So that's a very important property. And uh, if you're given uh, a bunch of x, y points, for example, let's say we have x and f of x, and we're just given some points like 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, 6, and I'm just randomly making these uh, numbers up. They have nothing to do with this problem. We can find those the corresponding points or points on f inverse of x simply by reversing the the x and y coordinates so 1 0 becomes 0 1 2 negative 1 becomes negative 1 2 and 3 6 becomes 6 3 and uh, if you are given functions like this and this and you plot points kinda like what I did on this graph you can demonstrate to yourself that every point on f of x, by reversing the x and y coordinates, becomes a point on f inverse of x and vice versa. Anyway, that's it for now. I uh, hope that was helpful. Please check out my um, mobile apps, which uh, cover everything from algebra through calculus with examples, tutorials, and solvers and descriptions of my apps are listed at my website, www.lfeldman.com. See you next time.